Hello everyone and welcome back to today's video. So today we are building something that I came up with. I wanted to do a build that had a sunken garden that had like a fire pit type of thing that you could put in there. So this is what we are starting with first. We are putting in the garden structure. So we're using our favourite things, the platform tools, to make different layers. And I wanted the curved edges to make it a little bit more natural and a little bit more organic in shape instead of having like square everything. So we are having stairs down and this is going to inspire the house itself because I wanted to have an access from the ground level the actual ground level and then I wanted to have access from a balcony from these little step downs that we're going to have so that is what we are going to do so this is where our sort of basement what turns into a basement area is going to be and then this is our ground well not ground floor but like first floor balcony space and then it's just having to match everything up together and we put some half walls in between the house and the steps so we can have like planters in between just to make it look as though it all fits it all flows into the <laughs> in the space and I haven't built anything again for like two weeks because there's, there's nothing to inspire <laughs> I have to wait now until something an idea comes along and that seems to be every two weeks at the moment because <laughs> there's there's nothing else and when you've been doing it for how many years it gets it gets a little <laughs> a little burnt out on ideas and different things you can do especially as I prefer just building in the sims and not doing anything and the wedding pack is broke still <laughs> So there's no point getting that and yeah we we just have like odd kits coming out and stuff like that so I hope there's something that comes out that isn't broken and isn't anything. I am going to Paris in like a, under just over a week when this comes out so I will probably get super inspired when I go and want to build a load of buildings that I see, I have like, well, I didn't plan my my weekend. My my friend sent me a map with everything that I should go and visit. So I was just like, thanks for planning my entire holiday for me, <laughs> which is good. It doesn't mean I have to stress about what I should see, but I have only a limited amount of time to go see everything. So I definitely... I'm already missing out a few bits that I really wanted to see because I don't have enough time but that just means you have to go again doesn't it <laughs> so yeah that is gonna be super fun and I cannot wait it's gonna be super exciting just to have a break and explore somewhere new get to have some really good food and do some exciting things and I just cannot wait because <laughs> a project at work is driving me a little insane and I don't want to have to think about it ever again, <laughs> which is what I'd have to do as soon as I get back and think about it. <laughs> but oh well, by then it would have calmed down so much more. And I actually went into the office as well, which is a very novel idea of going back into the office but it is a super cool office it has a super cool view as well so I I do not mind <laughs> having to go in and it's gonna be interesting <laughs> what we what we do with going in to work and everything in the coming months because who knows and we now have the basic outline of our house so we've got an upstairs, we've got this ground floor level that I've tried to make the terrain level to at the front at least. So it doesn't look as though it's like a three storey house. And then we've got this under level that has some windows peeking out every now and again, which we'll see as I go around and place 
some of the windows in. Some of them like peek out at different points because the, the ground slopes away. So there's there's more windows in some locations than others. So it, you, you do get some light in the basement area. But I think it's it's quite a standard house that I see when I watch buying and selling. <laughs> And I I made the outside really nautical themes, so it's probably a really good house to put in Brindleton Bay if you've got cats and dogs. It p would fit in really nicely because we've got some of the the woods like flat siding in the blue, and then we're gonna have some of the light stone, and then I put some red trim around the roof, so it looks very nautical, <laughs> which is kind of nice. I quite like some some nautically looking builds every now and again it makes it makes it look interesting and who doesn't love being by the sea i need to go to the seaside <laughs> again soon it's really annoying because the the train network that i would need to get down to it is constantly having engineering work so it is a pain in the ass to get down there and they need to stop. <laughs> they really need to stop so I can go down. And then we have our pillars because we needed some split between the ends that are the blue and the stone. And I don't want to stick the back out anymore. So we're going to use pillars to separate it. And I like the fact that on one side I could actually stretch it all the way up. Which made it look nice and seamless and just lovely for once for once the sims was behaving itself <laughs> and we have some nice tiled roof and we are going to put some plants and bits and pieces around to hide the terrain a little bit more and by the end when we put in trees and more bushes and everything and a pathway that leads up then it looks a lot nicer so on this floor let's say the ground the first floor, let's say the first floor, we have this massive kitchen and dining area and then we have a TV room and a formal dining room and a front sitting formal room. We have a bathroom on this floor as well and it is a huge house, <laughs> like it's probably unnecessarily big. And I thought we've got lots of darker colours in this build. So we're going for lots of browns and purples. But quite a lot of the walls are like this muted version. Like almost pastel but like a dark pastel colour. Which I was quite liking. And this lovely brown kitchen. <laughs> it's quite a modern kitchen for this type of house. But I think it works quite nicely. And it matches the, the brown that we've got in the tiles. And then we've got the white subway tiles. That was always nice to add in. Because <laughs> they, they are nice. And you could obviously add the brick as well. The base game brick would look pretty cool in this build as well. I didn't put too much clutter in this build. This build is very like depersonalised compared to some of my other builds because I thought it would be a perfect home for someone to move their sims in and actually just put their own stuff in and there's so much space as well I think the sims would be able to easily navigate around this house because it's so big and then this is when we start bringing in the purple colours because the dream home decorator you can just like match match those dark tones with the <laughs> with the purples and tones that we have on the wall and we have these really big windows in here as well so it gives it a pretty epic view from two sides of the house anyway and there's there's like an awkward space like to the, the left of this at the moment so we put in some chairs and they obviously have to put in some fern like shelving and bits and pieces to have on that wall and what else do we do we do i think the sofa's purple 
Yeah, the sofa's purple. <laughs> There's a lot of lot of purple in this build, but on the on the top floor we have all the kids' bedrooms, and then in the basement we actually have the master bedroom. Which when when we come to see it, <laughs> it's in a little bit of an odd location because you'd be like, why would you put the kids' play room next to the master bedroom? But I thought because it's so big downstairs that the master needed to be down there just to just because so this is our living room which goes out onto the deck area as well so I thought that would that was an uh, important thing to have because what's the point of having the deck off a room like the dining room or something like that it would have been a little bit strange but we have we have our dark woods again in here and we have one of the sectional sofas. I did want to bring in the round coffee table because everything was getting quite square and I thought it was quite nice to break up all the squareness of <laughs> of the objects that we were putting in. Especially when you're using the sectional, it can get very square. <laughs> and most most things in this game are square, which is very odd. I know most objects are square, but there's there's not enough round things in The Sims. It's probably because I don't know why it's because like we have hardly any round end tables or round. We have a few round coffee tables. We don't. We can't have round walls unless you use platforms, and it's just sad. Do you not need some some circle respect? <laughs> stand up for the circle and we just add in a few few extra chairs and bits and pieces because it's supposed to be not too not too overly decorated and because we've got the kids room downstairs there's no necess not necessarily needing to have the toys up here in the, the media area so we didn't have to put there wasn't that opportunity to put clutter and stuff like that in here because everything's supposed to be nice and clean <laughs> and tidy. And then we have our formal dining room here, which has our stairs down and our bathroom. So this room has like a corridor space. So technically we don't have between the two doors to put stuff in. And I thought it'd be quite nice to put in a painted fireplace. We've got the nice white one from Cottage Living, which I think looks quite nice. And then we doubled it up. So in the formal dining room, not formal dining room, formal living space, there was like a feature where a TV would go instead of having another TV because that'd be a bit weird. Then we actually have the fireplace. It also means it's nice and cozy in the or the winter if you've got seasons. And then we're just putting in a few bits and pieces into the dining room. We've got the, the Jungle Adventure sideboard, which is always a good one to put in. We've got a little, not so, like a nice small lighting fixture over the table. I wish that was slightly bigger because it's a little bit small, but if you size it up, it's way too big. And I actually forgot we had that little triangle greenery hexagon thing and it fitted quite nicely with all our dark tones that we've got going on so that is that was a nice thing to put on the wall and then in this room it's a lot lighter but we still bring in some dark tones because it the blue on the wall needed some <laughs> it needed some light lightness in this build just to contrast with all the dark things but we do put some like we've got the dark coffee table and the dark version of the lamp and I thought it was quite nice to put in the the sunflowers and the yellow plant next to the thing because we've got the blues in here and it always goes quite nicely and then by the front door we've got our shoes and coats and bits and pieces to go here our umbrella <laughs> umbrella stand and I think it would be quite nice if you could fit like if you wanted to you could probably fit in a cupboard all that sort of stuff between the the bathroom and 
the the archway and you can probably fit in a little cupboard to put all that stuff in if you really wanted to but you don't want to have it right <laughs> next to the front door we also have a laundry room downstairs which is quite fun it's behind a glass sliding door so you can it's like shut away <laughs> which you can actually see there so we've got hampers in all the bedrooms so the sims would have to walk all the way around to put to get everything but we do have some downstairs as well where the laundry is and then this is our kids play area which goes out into the back garden as well so I was just trying to find a load of fun things to put in here so we've got the the tent the foosball the the lego thing doll's house we've got a keyboard as well craft table science table we've got the decoration box in here as well because I thought it'd be like a little toy box thing and then some cushions to put about the place and then on the other side is like the adult <laughs> version of this so we're gonna have a bar with two big comfy seats and an office space as well so I thought that was quite fun to have like all the f entertaining areas in this basement space and the master bedroom we actually get onto there actually has built-in wardrobes in the bathroom which is a little bit odd come to like thinking about it but I think it works quite nicely because you get dressed and then in all in the all in the one space and then this is our little built-in like cupboards and bar area we could put some mirrors behind it just to make it look a little bit fancy <laughs> and then we're gonna have our desk area this room doesn't have any windows in it so it's quite dark We'll probably get a little bit dark and a little bit dingy in here. And everything down here is like in the purple colour as well. Especially as we've got like dark wood tones. Everything in this room could get a little bit <laughs> a little bit claustrophobic. But who who cares? It's the Sims. The Sims do not get claustrophobic. And then we've got this nice rug, two chairs, so you can sit down here, have your whiskey on the rocks and <laughs> just chill. And then I thought we did need something there, like a hobby thing. So I put the candle making station there because I thought that would be, that'd be quite fun. I don't really play with it quite that often, but it's it's quite a nice like crafty thing. You could put the craft table if you've got nifty knitting there instead because that would work quite nicely. But that is that is our little adult space and then this is our master bedroom so where we've got the four windows that is where our bed is gonna go and we're gonna have this nice quilted luxurious bed <laughs> to go go in here and I always forget that this color version of the rug exists I know we have like the base king version but I can't remember which one it's from but it's so much nicer because it's got the two of three different tones in it which just makes it makes it look so nice and it's huge as well so putting in this room is perfect and then we're gonna have our like vanity with our big get famous glowy mirror which I love putting in here and then we've got our mirror the other side that has like the dressing bits and pieces which I thought was quite nice just to have a feature. We're going to put some chairs either side of it. So there's like a sitting area in here as well. And then we're going to put in some of the the paranormal wallpaper, which I'm getting a little bit obsessed with putting in the, the black tone. And then we're going to do grey walls to like lighten it up because I don't think white would have gone very well because everything, like the floors are light and we wanted to tone it down so upstairs we have a family bathroom with the landing and then we have a toddler room like a boy well like a blue gaming room that has a double bed so it's like a teen bed and they've got the the double wardrobe built-ins and then this is a kid's bedroom or like pre-teen they've got the the single built-in wardrobes so I thought it was quite nice to actually put in some built-ins because the rooms were so big 
so it's quite nice to put those in. So this is a very pink and blue room with some white walls. So I'm going to put in a lot of colour using the objects instead of putting it on the wall. And I thought it was quite nice to use the triangle wallpaper. Then in the family bathroom, we've got the shower, we've got the bath, we've got double sinks as well, just so everyone can use everything. And I'm putting in a load of decoration stuff. We've got the, the, the heart eyes mirror as well, which I do prefer my crying mirror because that is... That is a mood <laughs> and a vibe and I love it so much. <laughs> and then we're going to put in a nice pink spotty rug and then we're going on to the garden. So we can see that we've got the planters in and some railings and it just makes that whole area fit in so nicely with the rest of the house. It doesn't look as awkward as it did beforehand. So we're going to put a barbecue and a little picnic table underneath and then we'll just have some seats up the top because you don't need too much on the balcony space and then down below we're going to put some nice big sofas that's supposed to be like outdoor furniture you can pretend and then we're actually going to put an onsens in because I was like what can we put in that space I can't put an actual pool space and I, I always think some of the pools when you've got landscaping like it's a cliff basically <laughs> up the side of the lot that it does need that extra little bit and the stone onsens just fits in some of the builds so much and it's like the perfect shape and size as well so it's like perfect and we're gonna have a basketball hoop as well we're actually gonna move that because I was like oh, does the onsens fit and it does it does glitch a little bit on the corners where we've got the, the curves but I think it, you simply should be able to get in. I don't know if they can get down the stairs that easily. And then we've got a load of lamps or lanterns around as well, just to get some extra lighting. Uh, and we're just going to throw in, <laughs> literally throw in some trees <laughs> to make the area look very filled in. You could obviously extend the garden because there's a slope down the side of the house there. So it is level at the back here. So if you wanted to put in some more kids stuff, like a swing set or a climbing frame. And I tried to use like quite big trees to hide the the landscaping around here. And we're actually going to close off this little driveway section because it looked a little bit strange <laughs> having it go so far back. And we're going to do some nice plants here just to make the, the actual slope area a little bit blend in a little bit nicer <laughs> than we have it at the moment but I think once we get all the plants in we put a car on the on the front of the driveway actually the landscaping does fit in a lot better than it does <laughs> without any landscaping or anything I think it's quite a cool cool house that's on different levels which makes it a, a lot more interesting than doing it all on the same level so I, I just wish we had more lots like this with some hills and stuff so let's jump into our screenshots and have a look at the the layout and you also get to see some of the bathrooms as well I actually do go in and finish the one that I missed on the first floor because I always, I always miss something it's either like the bins or something like that but there is I do go and finish it off. So this is our entrance way with our formal living area, which is a bit lighter. And then we've got our formal dining room. We have all the knickknacks on the fireplace and then our living media room. And then we've got our kitchen diner, which is very spacious. You could probably get some a table in the middle if you wanted some extra pretend prep space. And then our view down the kitchen <laughs> to the dining room and then this is our adult room office skill building drinky time <laughs> and then we've got our laundry which i have to show through the glass doors it's fun <laughs> and then we have our kids room which is such full of such fun things for them to do just makes some space for it and then we've got our master bedroom which is very classy 
and the master bathroom as well, which has the built-in wardrobes in there. We've got a double sink, a little laundry basket, and we've also got a shower bath combo. And then this is our hallway upstairs. We've got a little like photo wall, and then this is our toddler room, which is very loud and pink and purple. And then this is our teen room, so it's very blue, like musicy. And then this is our kids' bedroom is nice and fun and then this is our upstairs bathroom which is nice and light and then we'll go outside and have a look at all the bits and pieces so this is our view on the balcony and this lot has the, a nice view out into the water as well and then this is down to the, the lower bit and then this view is quite cool as well from the thing so I hope you enjoyed this build if you did feel free to give it a like and hopefully I will see you in the next one. Bye.